HIV stands for human immunodeficiency um, virus. And really, basically, what it is is it's a state where your whole immune system, the whole part of your body that's designed to fight off infection, gets wiped out. Now, there's so many different theories as to how it came about, but the, the one that's most widely accepted is a theory that attached to the back of a polio vaccination that they were either experimenting or doing whatever it was that they were planning on doing. Uh, the World Health Organization went out into certain parts of Africa and inoculated people with uh, this new strain of polio vaccination. And the idea is, well, some say it was a polio vaccination and some say it was a smallpox vaccination. Give us an approximate year this might have been taking place. Oh, uh, this was back in the 20s, okay. 20s through the 40s. Okay. Okay. And the Polio was cured so to speak in the 50s all right when when did they when did they get to the bottom of polio now that i'm not sure i think the 40s or 50s 40s or 50s mm -hmm. but go okay. right ahead i'm sorry and, and actually there's a great book on it written by a guy whose last name is hooper that we can talk a little bit about but the, the theory is that they were trying to whatever they were trying to do we we don't know if they were trying to do ethnic cleansing or what the the idea was but they were testing out different vaccinations and that the HIV virus virus that's how it originated that's that's the biggest most accepted theory now you know if you're a conspiracy theorist you might tack on to that or you know you might think he came from a monkey but that whole idea of it coming from a monkey is because the virus that they originally used to inoculate the people in these different areas of Africa it was actually uh, harvested from the kidney of a monkey. Uh -huh. So that's where that whole monkey thing comes from. I see. And so man-made from um, the, the literature states is probably man-made. Yes, the literature states that it probably was man-made. Okay. But the, the scary thing about the virus is that every time it's transmitted to a new individual, it changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what what's happening, and when you think about getting tested for HIV, we're not actually drawing your blood and looking for the virus. We're drawing your blood and looking for a reaction antibodies or warriors that are designed to attack the virus. So what oftentimes happens is our tests are designed for HIV 1 and 2. Well, what the scariest part about it is that they have detected all of these other types of HIV, you know, just HIV 6, HIV 5, HIV 4, and our tests really aren't designed to test for those. So it mutates and regenerates. And yes, that's why they're having such a hard time curing it, is because it's constantly changing. And, you know, when they finally isolate something, it's changed into a new form. So it's kind of scary. And originally it was a sexually transmitted disease. And then we got away from thinking that when in America we got comfortable thinking it was a homosexual disease. So uh, it got targeted and pigeonholed as being a homosexual disease. And how did that get started? It got started because the the first isolated cases were in white gay males. And the theory behind that, or the idea, allegedly, there was a um, flight attendant who was going back and forth, you know, transatlantically, and basically having sex with any man who would. Mm -hmm. And that he just systematically, you know, dropped the virus off in all the different cities and, you know, pretty much got to the point where it was spreading through the gay community. Now, if you know anything about human sexuality and reproductive health, men and women are so closely linked, you know, that even when you have a homosexual man or a homosexual woman, there's still attraction to the opposite sex, meaning that there's so much gray area in sexuality that the average gay person might still have physical attraction to a member of the opposite sex. So with that being the thought process, I don't know how anyone ever thought that this was just going to be a gay person's disease mm -hmm. because obviously, you know, gay people are human and f sexuality is fluid. So there was going to be mixing of heterosexual and homosexual sexual practices. That was bound to happen. <laughs> Exactly. And that's exactly kind of what we're seeing here in the African American community is there's such a thin line in our community as being a, a, a gay man or being a, a, a bisexual man or being a straight man that oftentimes those cross. So what you're seeing, especially in Africa, for instance, 
We have the diamond mining industry. Mm -hmm. So what happens is these guys are removed from their homes for years at a time. Yes. And they go out and maybe had sex with prostitutes or whatever. And they come back home and they're actually giving HIV that they caught on the road back to their people at home. Now we're seeing that replicated in our community when it comes to the prison system. Now whether we realize it or not, you know, uh, three out of every four black men under the age of 25 in Washington, D.C. has gone through the justice system in some way, shape, or form. What's that you know, uh, figure again? Three out of every four wow. young black men under the age wow. of 25 has been in and out of the prison system 75%. or the justice system. Yes. Mm. So when you think about that numbers, and then you think about when you go to Atlanta and three out of every four men in, in the city center are HIV positive, you cannot talk about HIV and AIDS without talking about the prison system and without talking about sexual habits of people when they're together mm -hmm. in a confined area. Sex is sex, pleasure is pleasure, and it doesn't matter at that moment if it's a man or a woman. You want to take some calls, Dr. Rachel? I think it's lighting up here. 591-1690, this is the McClendon Report. Theo the Thinker here. We have Dr. Rachel as a special guest, Dr. Rachel Ross, MD, PhD, talking about sexually transmitted diseases, namely HIV and the origins of HIV. We have Cornelius from Harvey. Welcome to the McClendon Report. You have Dr. Rachel here.